Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another Python tutorial. Sorry it's been a little bit since I put out a you know pure Python tutorial. It's been about a couple weeks. Uh, I've been super busy with algo and automated trading of Bitcoin. I actually already have one investor and another one is interested. That's been going really well and we've been having some great results there. So naturally a lot of my attention and focus has kind of gone that way. Plus we had the holidays. It's, things have just been pretty busy. So hopefully you guys all had or are still having some great holidays. Uh, also, I do have a gift for you guys, and this one actually comes from someone named Igor Vasilshikov. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I don't think he'll be watching this video anyways, but yes, it comes from him. Uh, looks like he actually works for EMC Corp, which is pretty much the definition of big data. So it's fitting he uh, passed us some, some pretty great inf information on uh, what we're going to be talking about today, which is buffering. So all of the videos and quote unquote big data videos that I've ever put on here are all really considering file sizes that a single computer's amount of RAM is going to be able to handle. Uh, so most of like the data files that I use that I consider big are better put probably large. Maybe you know three gigs is pretty much the biggest one I've ever really messed around with, uh, and that's that's three gigs is a pretty nice stock output file. That's that's your tick data right there. So uh, the question though is, how would you open up a file that is far greater than say, than your RAM, right? So let's say 100 gigabytes or a terabyte. Or also, how should you <laughs> open up a file that's two gigabytes even? So without, you know, cause you don't have to read the whole file into memory. So even if, if you don't have like a huge file, you can at least save some memory by not reading literally everything into memory immediately. Um, so far, only really one video in this series uh, with machine learning, the one where we did the pattern recognition, that was the only video that really required that we use the full amount of data to be read into memory since it referenced all of the data constantly to like make all of the patterns. But you wouldn't you know, necessarily have to reference all of the data either. We just chose to. Um, but most of the time you should be able to read, uh, you know, like a large amount of data into memory in chunks, right? To make any of the changes that you need to make or perform analysis or whatever. So to do this, we utilize buffering. So what is buffering? Well, the idea of buffering is to like ration the amount of input from a source. So you can think of it like in a day, you might eat, you might be able to eat, you know, 2,500 calories, but you wouldn't be able to consume that much in one sitting or you shouldn't be able to. <laughs> Some people can. Anyway, you shouldn't be able to. Uh, you have to buffer, right? And eat maybe 500 here, 750 there, etc. right? Your computer's the same. So it just kind of makes sense to do this buffering, right? So you wouldn't, you know, that's back to the food example. You wouldn't really, you wouldn't open up the fridge and take out all of the food at once. You, you can't possibly eat all of the food. So why would you take it all out at once? Because you're just going to put it all back because you're not going to be able to even reference that, you know? Uh, so that's where the buffering comes in, right? You open the fridge, which gives you access to make, you know, let's say 15 sandwiches, but you just grab the stuff necessary for one sandwich. You make one sandwich, and then when you're done consuming and digesting one of those sandwiches, you're set to do another one, right? Um, so let's do that within programming and opening up of a file. So what I've got here is a couple of files. I'll just show them to you guys. We have a file I've called Big Datas, and it is 50 gigabytes. Uh, so just a little bit more than my RAM. Uh, I've got 16 gigs of RAM here. Here we go. You can total and installed here. Um, and I'll bring this over when we start reading it, because in theory, uh, well, we would max out our RAM. But uh, I'll also show you guys as we read this 2.47 gigabyte file, you won't even notice a change in the memory at all. So uh, we'll be doing that. Now, so those are the files uh, that we'll, we'll use. And as you can see, both of them, basically big data is just a bunch of these like stacked on top of each other, basically. Uh, but they're ba this just tick data for GBP USD uh, 4X. So let's go back to our tutorial here and let's go ahead and get started. So we don't actually need to import anything, um, but what we will do is we'll say the output file equals open and we're gonna open up uh, file. We're just going to call it example output.txt and we want to open that with the intention to append it since we're going to be doing this in chunks, right? 
So let me bump this up just in case we need the space. And now what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say with open. And what do we want to open now? Because that's our output file. But what do we actually want to read, right? We're going to read. Uh, we'll, we'll get to this one uh, at the end. But first, let's just read this file right here. So this is within my RAM. But I'll show you why it still matters and why you would want to use this even if you're using files within your memory. So we're going to say with open uh, gbp usd underscore standard dot csv. That's the name of that file. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, with open, you have uh, three parameters that you can, in theory, put in. The first one you must have. The second one you don't have to have. Uh, but you would have you know, either append, read, write, whatever. Uh, but then there's a third parameter that we've never covered, and that would be buffering. That's the buffering parameter. Now, if you had, you know, like you say, okay, we want to open it with read, then for buffering, you could just straight up like put in a value. Uh, but for now, we'll just leave the second parameter empty, and we're just going to say buffering equals. And then here, um, let me just put it in, and we'll put 2 million bytes. The way this works is if you put a number one there, it means it's going to buffer by line. So it's going to be line buffered when it, if you put just one. Any other positive number, you'll get a buffer of that size in bytes. So here we've got 2 million bytes that we're going to buffer by. Um, but then you can also, uh, if, you, if you put like no parameter or a negative parameter in there, it's just going to use system defaults. Um, so it's going to attempt to pretty much just open it up. Now, um, so we'll make that uh, smaller. Now, the idea here is you would want to make this number as big as possible. So this will literally only buffer by 2 million bytes, right? So that basically translates right to 2,000 kilobytes or 2 megabytes. So very tiny usage of RAM, right? We could go by 20 megabytes if we really wanted, but I'll just show you this tiny, tiny buffering amount. Now, the next thing that we want to do, and obviously the, the larger you make this buffer, the, the more uh, efficient it's going to be generally. But for now, we'll just leave it pretty low, just so you guys can see there's pretty much no impact on RAM at all. So you would open that, and then we're going to say as f. So with opening this file, and we're going to just say as f, you know, as f for file, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say for line in f, we want to do something, right? So like, um, let's just say um, we do want to perform some sort of analysis on here. Uh, and our, our analysis, uh, well, actually, Here's what we'll do. We'll actually just modify the file. So this file right here, this GBPUSD file, it is about 2.5 gigabytes. But we could probably knock some of that file size down by just removing GBPUSD. We know it's GBPUSD. It says it in the file name. So we already know what we're dealing with, so there's, it's not totally necessary that we leave that little bit of text there. So we could already knock down some file size just by doing that. You could also perform analysis. You could, add, you know, you could append a moving average to the end or something like that. But for now, let's just let's remove GBPUSD and see how much you know space that we save just by doing that. So let's come back here, and so we're going to say for line in F, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say save line equals, and then we're going to say line dot replace, and then we just want to replace GBPUSD, and then also a comma like within the quotes. Uh, we want to do that and replace it with, oops, replace it with nothing. And the reason we want to do the comma is because it's comma separated here. And so we really want to get rid of, well, I can't really highlight it, but we want to get rid of all this. The reason also I'm not opening this up in Notepad is I literally can't. It's too big to be opened up in Notepad. Anyway, moving on. Now, uh, coming back here, save line replace. Because obviously if you had it in Notepad, you could run this function in Notepad pretty much with a control H, you know, find and replace function there. Anyway, um, but obviously, like I was saying, you could you could do like a moving average or something else like that on this this data or any or other form of analysis really, or you could save it to I don't know a database, which would make a whole lot of sense. Anyway, moving on, out dot write or actually output dot write, and what do we want to write to this output file, which is this example output dot text, which we're up opening with the intention to append. What do we want to write? Well, we want to write that new line, so save line. And then basically, once we're all done with this uh, loop, basically right here, uh, we need to, sorry, I just banged my mic. We need to do output.close, and we're going to close out of the output file. 
So um, that's pretty much it. Now we can go ahead and save it and then we'll run it. And this will actually, uh, our buffer size is pretty small. Maybe what I'll do uh, is we'll run this one and it pro probably gonna take like a minute or so to, to get through all of this at uh, two megabytes a line uh, or for each buffer. But anyway, the next thing I'll do is maybe we'll add a zero to this and, and see how much quicker it goes. Um, I don't really want to sit here and just lull the whole time, so maybe I'll pause it, but then you guys won't get a feel for how long it took. Hmm. I guess I'll pause it. All right, it is all done. Let's go look at it. Uh, here's our example output. So we knocked off 0.44 gigabytes, right? So. 440 megabytes got knocked off of this thing. That's pretty good, I would say. So, uh, what I want to do, I wonder if I can do this. Yeah, okay, so it was created two minutes ago, modified one minute ago. So that tells you it, that process took about a minute uh, to run through. Sounds about right. So now let's go ahead and let's go back to our uh, script. Where is it? And then we could say instead of you know that, uh, we could add really we could add two. Let's add two more zeros. So 20 megabytes to now it's 200 megabyte buffer. Ah, oh, I forgot to show you guys my RAM too. I'll bring that over on this one. So we'll go ahead and run that. And this one probably will make my RAM bump a little bit, but not not as much as it two gigabytes. So anyways, let's go ahead and save that. Uh, we're currently 49% memory. Uh, so yeah, we'll run it and bring over the memory. So you saw it jump from about 49 to 51, which makes sense, 200 megabytes this time uh, that we're running. But naturally, not too much else is going on, right? From 49 to 51 on a 16 uh, gigs of RAM, that's not too shabby. So now we're still waiting. I'm hoping this one will finish quicker, but we'll see. And that's the kind of stuff that you'll probably find will vary, like kind of like what we were showing with compression. There's probably a very nice sweet spot, depending on a lot of factors that I probably can't even explain. Uh, but at least like with inc or, uh, compression, it, it, once you get past a certain point, it just doesn't make much sense to spend any more processing time compressing, you know, past a certain point. Yeah, this one's still taking a while. This one might end up actually even taking a minute to... Uh, to happen, so it might not make much sense to use 200 megabytes at all. I guess I'll pause it. All right, so that one finished. Honestly, it seems to me like that took just as much time. Uh, we forgot to change the file name. So I guess we can't check. You'll just have to take my word for it. That pretty much took a, a minute, I would say. So anyway, didn't really seem like we saved too much by making the buffer like huge. So now what we want to do is, the next thing I want to do is just show you guys. So now what we want to do, just to show you guys that it's freaking possible, we're going to go ahead and access this big data file. Now, this one we'll definitely pause on. I just want to show you guys that it's possible, so I'm just going to make a copy, basically, of big data's file. Now... And then just show you guys how long it took, I guess. We'll do the created and then modified since it creates the file immediately because it opens it with the intention to append. And then you guys can see it. It'll probably take, <laughs> I don't even want to know, probably like 10 minutes or something to do it. But the point is that it can be done. And the other thing, well, actually, here's what I'll do for you guys. Uh, this will make it easier. Uh, so what we're going to do is it's literally called bigdatas.txt, right? So we'll just call this example output 2. And then we'll say uh, big datas and it's actually dot text or txt and we'll leave the buffering there for line in f we can literally just let's just say we want to print out the line so this is the next thing too is like when you start wanting to like perform analysis uh it takes a while just to read that stuff into memory and then you can start doing your analysis whereas here you'll see in a second this is going to start doing shit pretty quick so uh, even though, it's t well, we opened it up as, what, 200 megabytes, so let's, I guess we'll leave it as 20, that's pretty small. So let's save that, and now it's going to print out the line, so it's going to spam the crap out of us, uh, but let's go ahead and run it. 
and we drag it over. As you can see, we're already just spitting out. I mean, this this happened instantly because of the buffer. We only had to open 20 megabytes, not. Wow, I can't even get this to move. Uh, oh, I can't even get it to stop. This is brutal. Hopefully, my mic is still working. I'll just break it. Anyway, I like cl I cl couldn't even like click the uh, X button. That was pretty funny. Uh, so, anyways, there there you go. I mean, we just opened up a 50 gigabyte sized file pretty much instantly using buffering just because we didn't actually open up 50 gigs we opened up 20 megabytes so that should be enough I guess I'll copy it just just for the curiosity in me I made this giant ass file so I really want to know how long is it gonna take to make a copy of this file so we might as well actually just find out I'll make it example output 3 we won't print the line and I'm trying to decide if I really want to leave it at 20 or if I should make it bigger. I think we'll just leave it at 20 megabytes, honestly. Uh, so I'll save that. Uh, and I think I'll just actually run this uh, in a prompt. So, yeah. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get it started. There's the file. Where is it? Example 3. So, okay. So that's that. Uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll just pause this, and then whenever it's done, I'll show you guys how long that actually took to make a copy of that file. But anyway, uh, stay tuned. All right, guys, that actually took a lot longer than I thought. I do. I forgot that we were making that uh, edit to the uh, the file, but we did that as well. So as you can see, we actually, you know, if you had a 50 gigabyte stock file that was spitting out this, you know, tiny bit of text on every line, well, you almost saved nine gigabytes. <laughs> so that was pretty nice. Anyway, this actually took more like 30 minutes, so let's click on properties here. Uh, so it was created 34 minutes ago, and it was last modified 6 minutes ago. So it actually took, you know, 28 minutes to actually uh, finish the job. But anyway, as that was happening, there was really, you know, no change to memory. And it was able to go through this 49, you know, almost 50 gigabyte file uh, with relative ease. Obviously, it took a while, but uh, it did it. So, uh, anyway, that's going to conclude the buffering tutorial video uh, and kind of, you know, the points to why you might want to do that. Uh, again, thanks to Igor for uh, showing me how to do that. Hopefully you guys learned something new. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.